multifamily mindset podcast think, think bigger Welcome back to the Multifamily Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rucker, and this is the MF Minute episode. I'm going to give you a quick tip, trick, tactic that you can implement today in your multifamily business. With that, let's dive into today's topic, which is how do I find a deal? The past couple of weeks, we've talked about underwriting more efficiently. Last week, we talked about setting your criteria, your buy box. So today we're going to talk about a different tactic or approach to finding deals. Now everyone wants an off market deal, but when you go to a broker right now and you ask, Hey, I'm looking for off market deals, value add, and you, you list off your criteria, they're going to put you on your, their list and they send you a deal. They're going to say it's off market. However, it's been sent to a couple dozen other investors that also want off market deals that fit the same criteria you're looking for, if not more people. So you're still going to have competition with those off market deals. A way around that to find an off market deal for you is what, uh, what in the single family space is called driving for dollars. And so this one's going to be the same as we're gonna call it driving for dollars, driving for apartments. But the requirement for this, in order to have this be effective is first you need a relationship with a young hungry broker. The second piece is you need a good property management company that you've built a relationship with as well. So those are minimum that what you need. And so let's dive into this. So step one is you're going to look for, you're gonna do the driving. You're going to drive around neighborhoods that you want to invest in and look for properties. If you're not local to the market that you're looking in, use Google Maps. Google Maps has great street view abilities that you can look and see pretty recently on properties and what they look like. So use use those two options, driving around neighborhoods, using Google Maps, and you're looking for properties that fit your criteria. If you don't know what that is, listen to last week's episode where I covered what are some of the aspects to your, your buy box or your criteria. So have those in hand, then start driving around and looking for properties that fit that. Any of the properties that do fit your criteria, mark it on the map, write it down, write the address down. Uh, you can even do a cool feature in Google Maps where you can create a list of, of properties or a list of different pins that you, you dropped. So do that to keep track of those properties. Then step two is you take that list of prospective properties that you're looking at and you take that to that young hungry broker that you've built a relationship with. And you say, here, here's a list of properties that fit my criteria that I want to buy. Can you find out if the owner wants to sell? And then you let that broker go to work. The reason why you go after the young hungry broker is because they have that desire to to go after this list to find those deals because they're trying to grow and get deals done themselves. And so they're gonna have that time and availability to do that. If you go after a more experienced broker, they probably will just kind of brush that off and say, I got my own leads that I'm working on. I don't need yours. So that's why you go after that young hungry broker. And so you, again, you let him go to work. And while he's doing that, you do some more uh, research on those deals. So step three is get with your property management company and understand how they operate in that market or even in that neighborhood. Do they have properties in that neighborhood? How are those properties operating? And essentially, what is their rules of thumb? You don't have to have them look at the same properties you're looking at but they can give you, by you describing your criteria and the types of properties you're looking at, they can give you some rules of thumb on their averages on how they operate properties in that area, what they're looking at. Then from there, you can do essentially a high level underwriting of those deals to see which ones could pan out. Again, these are very high level numbers because you don't have any information on the property except for maybe you can go to apartments.com and see, or, or another listing and see 
if they have any properties for rent and see what they're charging for rent. That way you can start to gather some information, piece it together of how much income they're probably bringing in um, and how they're operating to get a rough estimate of what you could potentially offer on this deal. So when the broker comes back and says, hey, I got in contact with the owner, send him a number. What What's your offer price? Then you have done that initial underwriting. You met with your property management company because uh, you're now prepared to give that offer. Say, okay, it's going to be around this range. And you can give a range. You're going to say it's going to be you know, 10 to $12 million or you know, five to seven, five to six million is kind of where we're sitting. We just need to see some financials uh, to solidify our numbers on this, on how we believe this could be valued. And another piece of that, you can even have the broker do his own analysis of where he, maybe where he sees the value of these, these properties as well to give you another level of a checkpoint to make sure he's aligned with what you guys are doing as well. And with that, then you just wait to see if this, the owner's willing to sell and so forth. So if you do this process, you're being more direct you're finding the list of properties you want to buy versus the broker just sending you deals that everyone else is looking at. And you've got to have to, you have to compete on those. A lot of times they don't fit your criteria. So instead of trying to train that broker on your criteria, which you should still be doing, you go ahead and send them the list of leads that you want to buy and they go to work and bring you those deals. So use that and provide me feedback shoot a message to me or put it in the type form that we have in the show notes. Love to hear if this works for you. I've used it and uh, helps build relationships with brokers first off. So go out there, use it, and hopefully that brings you some traction and you can find that deal that you're looking forward to close on. If you like this episode, please leave us a rating, review, and share it because we want more listeners to hear this podcast and be inspired and motivated to get deals done. And with that, let's go get some deals done guys. And we will see you next time. Multifamily mindset. Podcast. Think, think big.